Oh, if you miss cocktails and conversations on Sunday, this is what you missed. Cocktails and Conversations. Oh my God. I'm so excited to be back. The only reason we stopped before was to make sure that when we pursued it again, that it was a purpose behind every show. Well, it's back. So I guess we found our purpose, right? Now, um, I've been doing a lot of research and I've taken your suggestions and um, we have some new things. Always we are in for the input. So if you ever have any suggestions for our show, if you have ever have any topics that you want to see us discuss or any things you want us to delve into as a community to further the conversation, please feel free to leave us a message in the comments. Make sure you thumbs up and like this video and subscribe and share it to everybody who needs to know. Being that this is the last day of February, the one month that we have to celebrate Black history, I thought it would be more than befitting to just do this first show and kick it off the right way with um, some things about the Black contribution to this country that you may not know. But first, before we get into all of that, you know we have to make our cocktail. Our cocktail for the week this week is the Tequila Sunrise. Bum, ba, da, ba. The Tequila Sunrise is a very simple and eloquent drink to make. It only takes about three ingredients and two accents, and you'll be there. It requires four ounces of orange juice, two ounces of your favorite tequila, and grenadine by one ounce. Also, some maraschino cherries and an orange slice as garnishes. So, all right, we're going to get into making this drink, okay? So... I always use my drinking gourd. Um, I always use seven cubes of ice. That's just my lucky number, which is seven. And we're going to start with our tequila. My favorite tequila just so happens to be 1800 Coconut. Can you see that? That coconut bottle. Shout out to 1800 Coconut. We've already pre-poured. Thank you, Martha Stewart. In my cute little copper cups. We'll start with that. Mm -hmm, that's quite a bit of tequila. Mm -hmm. Pour your own troubles. Mm -hmm. And then our four ounces of orange juice. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add in our grenadine. You see that? Look at that. Ooh. That's pretty already. Kind of looks like a sunrise too, for real. I've already pre-sliced my oranges. We're gonna put that on the side and then we're gonna take a food prep toothpick and put our maraschino cherries straight on this thing. Let's see if I can do it in one swoop. I think I got it. I'm gonna put that little cherry juice in there too for good luck. And sit this on the side. And it fell right in. <laughs> mm. Now, it's time to do your very favorite thing. Our inhale, exhale, and cocktail. We do this to release the stress of our week in hopes of having a better pursuit for the week to come. Ready? So let's inhale. Exhale. And cocktail. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. Let's just get right into it then. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we? In this segment, we decided for our two topics to be mental health awareness with a mental health check-in 
after quarantine because everybody has been going kind of stir crazy in their house locked in their house with their own mental spaces telling them everything's okay and no one to tell them no and we're going to talk about the black contribution did you know which is basically going to stem around the things that are not impressed upon black youth in mainstream media or in the curriculum that they're taught at schools. So let's delve right in with this mental health situation, right? So everybody knows that people suffer with mental health and in the black community, well, the people that I'm directly connected to, there are so many stigmas behind mental health. I feel it's directly my direct duty to make sure we call things as they are, you know, spotlight the fact that people need help, you know, put to death the saying that I am not my brother's keeper. If just maybe, and this is just my perspective, if someone had reached out like the beauty pageant queen who um, jumped from her New York City apartment, Chelsea was struggling with depression. Depression is a mental health disability. And I wonder if it was because of COVID or if it was just because of the same black stigma that going to therapy is not what you're supposed to do. Most of the black people connected to me say that, oh, well, I'll just go before the Lord and he'll help me through all of my things because he knows my prescription. And that's true, but he also didn't make no fools either. And he also gave people the mental space and the ability to listen and to help you. I was always raised on the principle that a problem shared is a problem halved. So why not make mention of it to someone who is non-biased to the situation? You know what I mean? That's just in my perspective. And I'll drink to the mental health of everyone, not just black people. Anxiety can be a mental health disorder. Um, eating disorders and bipolar. Everybody knows somebody that's bipolar. We used to just attribute them to being crazy, but crazy is so minuscule to the, the vast scale of issues for mental health. Like we just label people, oh, that's just crazy. That's, that's just how they have been. They're just who they are without really thinking. And if I just reach out to this person or smile at this person, or I may not even know this person, but I just greet them with some kind of kindness. It could it could really affect change. Sometimes we gotta be the change we wanna see. And I'll drink to that. Ooh, cause this drink is good. Mm. Whew, it's a lot of people in the news here lately that are committing suicide. Like the mayor of Hyattsville, Maryland. He was 40 something, just got elected to mayor May of 2021. So you're still in your first term and you just kill yourself. Nobody even know why they left asking questions. Why? I mean, I don't understand. I don't want that's because his mental was not in check. I'm sorry. We tried to be so tough and rough and it's all a facade. Maybe if we stop using our representatives so much and tap into who we are take the time to be by yourself to learn who you are but also tap into who you are we might we might be able to help somebody else and stop thinking so much about ourselves. i mean that's just my thoughts but you've also got people like regina king's son committed suicide as well mr ian alexander jr and our hearts go out to Regina King because she is a family fave. All the movies she's been in has been great. She's been acting ever since 227, so we appreciate her. We grieve with her. But I almost wonder if, because her son was just, he was just becoming the artist and, and, and um, music man that he wanted to be. So it's just like... <laughs> If everything is all happening that you wanted to all at the same time, what is the disconnect? Why would you want to deprive yourself of all the hard work you've achieved? 
but you got to know the power of mental health because everything on the outside may look perfect, but the inside, if the inside ain't right, all the rest of it goes straight to hell. Just hell in a handbasket, just straight over the hell, bloop, right over the handbasket. So we got to, we really like, it's really, really, really impressed upon me to make sure that I convey to you as vehemently as possible. Just reach out to people. Be kind to people. Treat people well just because you can. Not because you have to. Not because they expect you to. Just because you can. You never know whose day or life you may actually change. Okay? Now that was a lot. Woo! That mental health thing can be stressful. Okay? It can be. I mean, just take it from me. I'm sitting having a cocktail by myself, honey. And you can call in if you ever want to have a suggestion. If you want to call in live and go with me, talk to me about your situations, make sure you do so. Put it in the comments down there and I will definitely respond. Hello? Because this is a conversation. Without two, there is no communication. Okay? Because this can't just be me talking to myself looking at the wall. And I'll drink today. Okay. Do we need to do another release? Because that was a lot to talk about. That mental health thing. I'll also put up mental health awareness helplines and suicide awareness helplines. If there's anybody who needs someone to talk to, feel free to reach out to me. I am always here and open. And we're moving right along, 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 moving right along. Boom, to the best topic of the night. And that would be the Black Contribution. Did you know? Listen. <laughs> We all know that African-American history in this country is grossly, grossly misrepresented. It just is. It's just a fact. We can do something about it, but no one's done anything about it yet. So, in the efforts of doing so, here's my little spiel at the things that you may or may not have known about us contributing to this place that we call home. All right, let's start. So, starting at the beginning, did you know that Black History Month was started in 1976 by a guy named Carter G. Woodson? Did you also know that it was placed in February to coincide with Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln's birthday? Before I decided to do this, I didn't know that. Why ain't nobody said that before? Because I've always wondered why it's the shortest month of the year. Like, is that shade or no shade? Shade or no shade? Or what about Shirley Chisholm? Did you know that she was the first black woman elected to the House of Representatives? Had no clue. What about Erin Jackson? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know about her because she's right now a modern day historian. She's breaking records in the Winter Olympic Games, winning gold medals in the speed race. You know we know how to run. Now, if one thing we know how to do, you know we know how to run. All right. What about the first black heavyweight champ? It wasn't Holyfield, okay? Wasn't Holyfield. Get him out your head. Wasn't him. It was a man named Jack Johnson, and he was heavyweight champion from 1908 to 1915. Come on, black people. What about the first black lawyer? All y'all criminals out there needed to know this, okay? Criminals need to know this. The first black lawyer was John Mercer Langston. And guess what? He was the uncle to the famed poet Langston Hughes. <clears throat> Who would have known? He also held public office in 1854. Black people in public office. We're just doing great things. We meant to be great. We are great. Kings and queens. Take off your crown and sit it down and come talk to come at folk. Why don't you? So we all know about Rosa Parks, right? Now her famous boycott, how she didn't give up her seat to the white person. Okay, good. But did you know? There was a lady by the name of Claudette Colvin, who was arrested nine months before Rosa Parks was. But the exact same thing. And because my sis was not on the front line with the rest of the people or whatever, she was not accredited for all of her work, all of her hard work and contributions to the civil rights movement. 
but she was exactly the very first one to be arrested for boycotting a white person getting her seat on a bus. Why I gotta give you my seat, Becky Lou? Why I gotta give you my seat, Becky Lou? And I'll drink to that, baby, because you need to find your seat just like I found my seat, Becky Lou. What about the first black billionaire? Do you know who that is? And no, it's not Oprah, okay? It was Robert Johnson, the founder of BET. Okay, so BET, just for y'all millennials, I'm a millennial too, but the babies of the millennials, okay? This was the place where we got all of our current videos and music, right? Y'all get Apple Music vibes, y'all get streaming releases. We had video releases on MTV and BET, baby. If it was gonna be anything hot coming out, you was on those shows. Ask Bow Wow. He was Mr. BET. Hello? Like, Mr. 106 in part. Like, the almost the poster child for BET. And it was started by a black man called Black Entertainment Television. Come on, black people. If you're gonna be great, be great, baby. Don't give it half step, okay? We got to tell these people we still here, we making waves, we doing things, okay? We doing things, okay? Don't treat us like we not, cause we are contributors. And I'll drink to that. Y'all, this cocktail is good. But my eyebrows, ooh. I just keep looking at them like, ooh. Shout out to Z1 Browns for these brows, baby. Ooh, the micro shading, the 6Z of it all. Ooh. Um, I guess I'll drink to that one too because them eyebrows is smashed. Let's get back to the black fact, okay? Did you know that the home security system, you know, your ADT, your security, your ring zombie, mm -hmm. so a lady by the name of Mary Van Britten, who was a nurse at the time, in 1966 was one of three black people to help invent this home security system. Boom. What about Garrett Morgan? You might know about him, you might not. He was accredited to the traffic light in 1923. Okay, I got some more for you. Let's give it some more. Let's give it some more. Let's give it some more. What about Frederick McKinley Jones? I bet you it you know. I, I, I bet you it you know that he helped create the refrigerated trucks in 1940. And ended up with 60 patents, roof mountain cooling systems to be included. So that good AC that you feeling swooping around in your hair, just circling around that central AC, mm -hmm, was begun by a black person. Come on, black people. Bring it on down, honey. Bring it on down. Alexander Miles. Mm -hmm. While well, all y'all out here acting like y'all bougie going into all of these hotels, no matter which one, the Omni, the Hyatt, the Hampton, the Hilton, the Marriott, the whoever. The Belmont, the, Bal the, the Waldorf Astoria, the whoever. When you get into that elevator and you see yourself in that reflection, remember a black man created those doors in 1887 by the name of Alexander Miles. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mr. Lewis Lattimore, I bet you didn't know he did the carbon light bulb. Or Mr. Mark Dean. Now this person, everybody should know. Because this person helped to co-invent the color IBM PC monitor and the gigahertz chip. So <laughs> all these cell phones with all these gigs in it, all these computers and iPads and MacBooks. Uh-huh, thank you. A black person helped you, thank you. A black person helped you, thank you. A black person helped you, thank you. And I'll drink to that because I love my gadgets and my gizmo. Give me my gigs, okay? I'm a gigillionaire. Hello? Oh, you better help me with this computer. What about Mr. Thomas L. Jennings? Mm -hmm. If anybody of y'all like to go to the dry Kalina, I know I do, I got some delicates. I don't like to mess up my silks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I've also taken up many garments to a dry cleaner who has turned me around um, some of these shows what models come less than fresh. Let me tell you, you don't understand how many garments I don't throw away because people don't come 
with the appropriate personal hygiene. It is simple, baby. Take a shower. If you can't put on chalk deodorant, put on aerosol. Hello? Praise the Lord for aerosol deodorant. It might have a little aluminum in it, but you'll be all right. Bro, I need a drink for that. Because do you know the countless of hundreds, almost thousands of dollars I've wasted by doing fashion shows on people who did not bathe before? Whew. What about Mr. Charles B. Brooks? Did you know he invented the street sweeper? Now, I know some of y'all black people don't even know what street sweepers are because until I got grown and moved to Cobb County, I didn't know what street sweepers was either because we didn't have them in the hood. We had all the trash that you threw out your car was still on the street when you came back next week, okay? So, thank you black man for the street sweepers. Did you also know that one in four Cowboys is black. Wait a minute. So I could have been an equestrian, like riding horses and you know jumping over. Hello, give me a jump. Hello, give me a jump. Come. On. Somebody to tell these kids that it's more to be than basketball players and football players because, and rappers and singers because, and influencers because that's all they want to be right now. They, they want to be influencers. I'm like, but what you influence the people to do? To be you? Because what do you do? I don't understand. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell you. Also, with these cowboys, everybody's heard of the Lone Ranger, right? It is said that the Lone Ranger was inspired by a black man by the name of Bass Reeves. Really? Like, he was an ex-slave turned U.S. deputy. Like, Black people out here killing the game. Killing it. No apologies. I think I'm gonna have to drink today. What about, I bet you didn't know. Now this hit home for me, cause I'm like, I love a good car, okay? A good one. And I don't wanna pay a nominal fee for one. So. Talk to me quick, talk to me quick. Did you know that a man and his sons by the name of C.R. Patterson was one of the first black owned and operated automobile companies? Like made the stuff for the kids in the street and guess how much the first car was? The first car was $675. You sometimes can't, get, can't even get a new car with a car note at $600. Let alone a whole car, the whole payment for the car, $675. That's damn near unheard of. Who knew? Baby, look, sign me up for one of them. Because if you don't, you won't get it. Hello? What about Dr. Gladys West is most famously attributed to being a pioneer mathematician. Her calculations led to the modern day GPS system. She was one of three black employees that wasn't, that she was one of three black employees in 1956 to help develop this math, but it wasn't even recognized that it could do the calculate the adequate calculations for GPS until 2018. Baby, you was before your time, baby. You was, maybe, you was way before your time, sis, because how we just get GPS in 2018 if you develop this stuff with three other black people in 1956? Shade or no shade? Why was we deprived of GPS until 2018? Um, it's crazy, isn't it? This last person. The last one I'm gonna give you, it's not the last person, but the last one I'm gonna give you, okay, is something that kind of struck me close because we had the same namesake. Everybody know I was a Coleman, a whole Coleman in these streets. But this woman, Miss Bessie Coleman, was the first African American and first Native American to pilot an airplane. Now, Everybody who knows me 
knows that my family is either medicine or military. I'm not sure who flew planes or not, but I wonder if they know this, cause we got the same last, we got the same last name. <sighs> Putting together this list of black contributors gave me a whole new perspective as to what I can really do and what I can achieve. You know how sometimes you're like, oh, I wanna do this, but then that voice in the back of your head says, no, nah, anybody else ever did that, so you can't do it either. That comes from a system where people of your same color are not magnified in the ways they should be because who knows, I might've been an astronaut or something if I knew a black woman was the first person in an airplane with the same last name as me. I mean, <laughs> our kids are the future. So somebody's got to impress upon them that they can be great and greater than the ones before them. Jeez Louise. Like, baby, I might've went out for Congress. I mean, it's never too late, but I never knew greatness like this was possible. I honestly feel like if we all are more accountable, this is the perfect segue to the Lamar moment, or moment with Lamar. Reaching back over this full episode, it's directly and ever so clearly noted that we've got to check up on one another. And more than that, we've got to feed positivity into one another, speak life into each other. Because if we don't, great things could be passed over that we may actually need. You know, our kids are what we're gonna leave behind. They're the ones to carry on our legacies. So we need to be teaching them in the best way we, and showing them in the best way that we can possibly show them. Like by deading the rumors that going to a therapist means you're crazy. We'd have a lot more mentally stable, mentally sound, productive citizens if we all weren't so scared of the stigma behind a therapist or a therapy session. I know me myself, I had some, some issues of trauma to deal with that it took laying on the couch to get through. Now, most of the black people that I know say, oh, well, you know, it's gonna be me and God. He is my counselor. He knows all of my prescriptions. He writes out all of my prescription. Okay, it's the whole song dedicated to it. But he also didn't make no fools. And he granted people the gifts and abilities to listen and help people through issues unbiased like with the most unbiased opinion so why not use them it's time to dead the saying that I am not my brother's keeper I charge you to teach these kids about the greatness that they can become but also check up on your brother or your sister Anybody that you love, that you care about, that you reach out to, that you see passing in the street. Because you never know what a smile or a hug or a simple wave or a nod or a what's up or a I like your outfit or whatever it is could do for someone who could be really struggling. See you next time. Take care of yourself and someone else. Okay, y'all. That's the end of our show for this week. Catch us again in two weeks' time on March the 13th at 7 p.m. The next topic will be released on Thursday of this week, which will be March the 3rd. Until next time, I love you for watching.